Well, if you've known me for long, you know I am all about getting the most nutrients and always the best flavor into our food. Because I know that when you learn how to make foods you love that will actually love you back, you've found a life-changing way to live that is sustainable. In last week's episode of the Power on Plants podcast, Jared and I shared the very best ways to get fantastic flavor into your grains. So, if you haven't heard that podcast episode, tune in to number 139 of the Power on Plants podcast to listen as soon as possible. One of the methods we shared is how to use broth instead of water when you're cooking your grains. It's incredible how this one little change can transform a dish from meh to Wow, adding a lot more flavor to your meals, and that's what we're going for. Now, you can get your vegetable broth from the store. It's super convenient if you're in a time crunch, but I never really found a store broth that I actually like. If you do have a store bought brand you love, always be sure to read the label because many times they're high in sodium and have other added ingredients that are not good for you, like sugar oil, and flavorings, even the natural ones. You just don't want any of those in there. What I want you to see today is that making broth at home is not hard and it's way less expensive. So today I'm going to give you the exact method for making homemade broth that is really tasty and doable with real life. This is going to give you a way to prepare vegetable broth that is quick, easy, and also tastes amazing. So first, what are the best ingredients to use? These are the ingredients that have always given me delicious results. Two medium onions, three stalks of celery, and four large carrots. The carrots I love because they give it a bit of sweetness. You're just going to cut these up, rough chop them into about three or four large chunks each, and toss them into the pot. Now if you want to open the carrot up to release more of its flavor. You can peel it, just throw your peel into the broth as well. You don't wanna lose any of the nutrients or the flavor. Now, I love the added zing you get when you add tomato paste. So I add about two tablespoons most every time I make a veggie broth. To add more flavor, you can add fresh garlic cloves. Now, if you love the flavor of garlic, I recommend adding a whole head. It really is not very strong at all. All you do is take the whole head. I'm not talking about one clove. I'm talking about the whole head. Cut it in half across, not from the root end to the other end. You're going to cut it across. That That's going to expose every clove for you. You can even cut it into about two or three big chunks. Go ahead and toss all those in, skin and all, the entire head. Just give it a rough chop, opening it up so it has contact with the water. It's going to taste amazing. Now, let's talk about herbs. Some of my favorites are bay leaf and thyme and fresh black peppercorns. I usually add one to two bay leaves. I'll add about a quarter teaspoon of thyme, and I'll also add about one teaspoon of fresh black peppercorns. You don't even have to grind those. You just throw them right into the pot. It is really hard to mess this up. And then what about the liquid? 12 cups of water. I prefer filtered water for mine. Now, for my secret ingredient. Are you ready? It's miso paste. Three tablespoons of miso paste. I recommend buying organic. Now we love the brand Miso Master. They have a chickpea miso and a white soy miso that are great for giving a lighter flavor similar to chicken broth. Red miso will give you more of a rich beefy type flavor. Think of what you might want to make with your broth ahead of time and then you're going to choose your miso based on the dishes that you're going to put it in. Now, don't worry if you're not sure what Miso Master looks like. In the membership, I'm going to go ahead and put a picture for you here, right in the community, so you'll know exactly what to look for. You can use other brands as well. I just highly recommend Organic, and I like the flavor of this brand. It is really good. So if I'm thinking about making, let's say a potato soup, how would I choose between white or red? Well, for potato soup, I would choose more of the chickpea or white miso, but If I'm gonna make a vegan beefless stew because of the beefy flavor of red miso, that's what I'm gonna pick for my broth. Now, if this sounds confusing, do not worry. I recommend using the white miso or chickpea miso to start because it tastes great in a large variety of dishes and you won't go wrong with that. You can find it in your local grocery stores like Whole Foods, Publix, Greenwise, or your local specialty store as well. 
Now, have you ever used bouillon or better than bouillon? Think of miso as a much healthier version of those. It's a great way to flavor your dishes without all the harmful ingredients that are often found in bouillon and with some added health benefits too. Now, what if you want to get a bit fancier? Let's say you've been using this recipe for a while and you want to mix it up. You want to change the flavor around a bit. Once you master the basics, that's a good time to try adding new additions. Ingredients you might consider adding are fresh or dried mushrooms or squash. You could use yellow squash. You could use zucchini squash, as well as herbs and spices like parsley or Italian seasoning to switch it up a bit. Do not be afraid to try new things. It's often the best way that you're going to discover your new favorites. Now, how do you prepare the broth? Well, you can boil it directly on the stovetop for about 30 minutes or just throw all the ingredients right into your Instant Pot. Set it and forget it. Yeah, that kind of dates me with Ron Papil ads when I was growing up. Set it and forget it. I love my Instant Pot. So you can toss all these ingredients into your Instant Pot, set it for about 20 minutes, let it go on manual pressure, and there you go, release the pressure. It's done. You could even use your crock pot overnight, but I like the flavor best when using the stovetop or the Instant Pot method. It just seems to give a richer flavor to the stock. There is another way to intensify flavor even more. You can lightly brown broth ingredients just before adding the water. It's not necessary, but you can give them a light saute. It's just another way to change things up a bit when you're ready. Once the broth is done, you strain out all the vegetables and herb pieces, and you can either discard them or let your children eat the carrots if they want the carrots. Then cool the remaining broth with the lid covering the pot, and once it's cool, store it in a mason jar. It's going to last you up to four days in the refrigerator and around five to six months in the freezer. If you're freezing it, do be careful not to overfill to the very top of the jar because when the broth freezes, you know, it's going to expand and that could break your jar and you'd lose your broth, which would be really bad. There are some things I recommend though that you leave out of your broth. These are the stronger flavor vegetables that might overpower the liquid and the flavor, such as cruciferous. That's things like broccoli or cauliflower, cabbage, those stronger flavors like that. Now, there's one more tip I want to share for saving even more money and reducing waste, too. When you're cutting these vegetables up for your main meals throughout the week, not when you're making broth, just when you're using them for your main meals, I want you to save all your scraps. When you're peeling carrots for a dish, save the peel. Onions, save the skins and the top. Carrots, save the tops and any ends you trim off, okay? And the ends of celery, too. Keep adding all all of these into a freezer safe container and when it's full it's time to make broth now some people will recommend making a certain type of broth for this dish or a different type of broth for that dish but it's so much easier for you to just make a larger back of a batch of a basic versatile broth that can work in any dish so instead of adding ginger now to make asian broth or adding turnips to create a french broth which might not work in all your upcoming meals i want you to reserve the ginger and the turnips to add directly to those dishes those asian or those french dishes you're making when you're actually making them this works so much better in the long run and keeping your broth versatile to use in so many different dishes now i want you to keep in mind this is a no salt added recipe. You can add a bit if you like when you're creating the dishes or onto your plate directly when you're serving it. That way, everyone can season their plated food to their own preferences. Cooking this way will lead you to use less salt and over time, it's gonna help you decrease the amount and your taste buds are gonna also adjust. So how do you use vegetable broth? You know, you may be wondering, well, now I've got the broth, what do I do with it? As we recently discussed on the podcast, you can use it for a liquid when you're cooking grains. This adds a wonderful flavor to rice, millet, quinoa, and your other favorite grains too. You can use it in place of oil to saute. Now, when you saute vegetables, I want you to think about no longer using oil. You are not going to miss it. And many vegetables often have fat in them that's going to cook out anyway. And they'll have that shine like the onions will still have the shine. You're not going to miss it. So what I want you to do is saute all your vegetables until 
they are looking a little brown. If you're afraid they're going to start sticking, you just add one tablespoon of liquid at a time. If you add any more than that, your vegetables are not going to be sauteed. They're going to actually boil and you won't get the desired result you're looking for. So when you do add that one tablespoon at a time, if you need liquid, many times you don't because the vegetables cook out plenty of liquid. If you do, reach for this broth, reach for it and put it in place of water. It works great and it just bumps up the flavor in your dish. You can also add it to soups, add it to stews and beans, add it to sauces and casseroles instead of the water that the recipe might call for. It's going to give you a much tastier dish and even more nutrients too. Now you know the exact steps for creating a simple delicious vegetable broth. I've shared the best method and ingredients to use, how to store it, and the easiest ways to save money and reduce waste all at the same time. I've given you some great ways to cook with it too. So there you have it. Veggie broth made simple and delicious. If you have any questions, I want you to bring those to the weekly member Q&A and I'll be happy to answer those for you there. I can't wait for you to try this broth. And when you do, I want you to post a picture inside the community or send me a quick email to anita at poweronplants.com and let me know how it goes. I'll see you soon.